Welcome to LA. So my little tiny house here was a beach bungalow built in 1920 and then in the 30s it was extended on so there's a unit downstairs in the front and in the 40s another on top so it was one big house at one point. It's been sectioned off and now it's a triplex and I've got the original little beach bungalow down here. Downstairs is the master bedroom, I've got two bathrooms in here, it's mostly original, slightly updated. You can see Catalina out there. Oh, It's a fun spot. Yeah, so this is where... My recreation of Harrell Engine started a few years back. We're fortunate enough to have this larger building behind our house. I grew up in this home. Now is kind of where I keep all of my personal cars since we moved shops, but uh, this was the hollow ground. So this is my old, this is what we're gonna take to the roaster show today. My Model A roaster that's for sale. This was my first car. I've had it since I was 13. All original, unrestored. Put over 100,000 miles on it. I've driven it everywhere. My 41 say, coupe. You can say that's their first car. Yeah, right, right, exactly. I've had that since I was 13. I just got this from uh, Jay Dean of Nostalgia Ranch down in uh, Fallbrook. He's a good friend. Another hot rod shop owner. Beautiful car. I've done a couple things with it. Got a client's car. That's my 52 wagon. Another client's car. So this is now empty and kind of a mess because all the tools and client cars are gone. That's still a client car and so is that one. They have yet to move to the new shop. That's my T-Bird. This is the mess remnant of the original Harrell Engine shop, at least the original from what I restarted. Harrell Engines LA went dormant in the 70s, but I brought it back a few years ago. So, this is where it started. This from the original owner, Mrs. Hennifer, out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Her husband uh, bought it for her, brand new in '56. She's a housewife. She never went anywhere but the market church. <laughs> so she put probably eight thousand like miles. Grandma. Right? He died in '61. She put the car in the garage and never drove it again. She died, left it to her nephew in Long Beach, so he brought it down here, and then ultimately I got a hold of it. it had about twenty-one thousand miles on it. It now has forty-three thousand miles on it because I don't give a shit. I drive. <laughs>
Everybody's gonna get a pair of these shorts and we're gonna wear them around. Breakfast mimosas. Oh, I'm still waiting for a table. We got stock. We're good. Don't worry about it. This is Brandon, my good What's buddy up, Brandon. Man? Yeah. Super into vintage fashion. Yeah. Slick Brandon, 1955. Yeah. Man, check out the shoes. He have flyers. There you go. <laughs> And not running. I know I got buddies that have like 10, 15 employees, yeah. and it becomes more of managing. Yeah, the adult daycare or whatever, or yeah, the managing, the parts ordering, and all that stuff. And it takes makes it more of like I don't want to say factory, running a factory, but because they're still creating and doing cool stuff. But I just don't. I you know I'll travel sometimes. I got a buddy.
That's commitment. So right now it's just it's like a little bit of post processing. Giving out cookies too. Yeah. We bought this acre for fifty thousand dollars. Oh my God! And the guys in the store said, "You paid that much for that?" Yeah, if I had started. Every car's got a story. Hot Rod magazine, Hot Up magazine, nineteen sixty-two. What year is that? 52. No, fifty-two. That's amazing. It's even it's on the cover of the Hero Hot issue. Oh wow. Yeah, that is amazing. That is amazing. Thank uh you. -huh.